Cuban government denounces effects of the United States blockade on the quality of life of Cubans. The president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, held a meeting with a special commission of the National Assembly for Dialogue, Peace and National Reconciliation. Protests and looting continues of Africa on Monday, leaving so far 10 dead and nearly 4,000 people arrested by the police. Hello, welcome to From the South. I am Denise Herrera from the Telestore Studios in Quito, Ecuador. We begin with the news. Stay with us. Cuban President Miguel e. Diaz Canel and some of the country's top officials held Monday a press conference to dissect the roots and responses to the ongoing destabilization campaign against Cuba. Diaz Canel, cabinet minister and high communist party officials took questions from journalists addressing the main issues raised by the unprecedented demonstrations that stay standing in several Cuban cities. Organized through social networks, main issues were blockouts, shortage of food and medicines, and monetary regulations affecting the U.S. dollar. This affection is a legitimate, Diaz Canel said, as the country is facing the most brutal United States blockage in 60 years, intensified in times of pandemic affecting all ways of life in the island. The president of Cuba, Miguel Díaz Canel, states that the main problems affecting the country today are the result of the aggressive economic, commercial and financial blockade imposed on the island by the United States. That media was targeted to the energy problem that we already explained, which is a reality, to the lack of supply of food and medicine and to the problems of the hard currency uh, shops, we have all those problems. What's the origin of all those problems? What's, what's the main cause? It is the blockade. So it is hypocrite discourse. It is a discourse of lies, a manipulating discourse. The blockade has limited us to acquire medicine or the raw materials with which we produce medicine. The effort the country is doing to manufacture medicine, it is incredible. We would need Entre 1,500 and 1,900 about 1.5 and 1.9 billion dollars to buy medicine. And do you know how we achieve that? We achieve that with an investment of 300 million because we are capable of producing most of the medicine, of the basic uh, medicines. So with 300 million, we do practically the same of what we should have done if we used the 1.9 billion dollars and we have allocated some of those incomes to face the pandemic and to develop the vaccines and I see how the world, in the world, how the countries that have developed uh, vaccines, they talk about billions and billions allocated to the program vaccines. I say to our scientists, I will not even ask how much you have used because there's, there's data that is not recorded, which is the, pro the, the will that those scientists have, and with that they have produced vaccines, but also to produce vaccines we need more supplies, and we, ha we lack certain components that we are seeking to have in the less possible time. The production and all the doses we have for our population, and also to give to the world. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador said on Monday he was in favor of a solution through talks and without the use of force to resolve the Cuban international problems and offers to send help. To help Cuba, the first thing that should be done is to suspend the embargo on Cuba. 
As most countries of the world are requesting. That would truly be a humanitarian gesture. No country in the world should be besieged, blockaded. That is the most contrary thing to human rights. And it has to be the Cuban people who decide, because Cuba is a free, independent, and sovereign country. There should be no interventionism. The president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, expresses his solidarity with the Cuban counterpart, Miguel Díaz Canelli, in the face of the attempts of the United States government to destabilize the peace of the Cubans. Cuba has been applied the same method of suffocation, persecution, for 60 years. And now the North American empire is going to say nonsense. If the United States and the extremist opponents also in Cuba really want to help the people of Cuba to immediately lift all sanctions and blockade against the people of Cuba. From here, from this dialogue table and from this presidential palace, I ratify, as I said yesterday by telephone to President Miguel Díaz-Canel, all the support of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, to the people of Cuba, to the revolutionary government of Cuba, brothers in the good and the bad always. Brothers and Cuba will succeed with the union and the majority consciousness of that noble and a heroic people who have. Well, take a short break now at Don't Go Away. The president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, held a meeting with the Special Commission of the National Assembly for Dialogue, Peace and National Reconciliation. During his address to the group of pro-government and opposition parliamentarian Miraflores Palace, the Venezuelan president pointed out three key points for economic recovery in the country, highlighting the emerging social economic in recent years as part of the resistance actions against United States coercive sanctions. The executive expressed its uh, readiness to establish a dialogue table with economic sectors of the country, emphasizing the dialogue of peace will achieve the interests of the Venezuelan people. The Venezuelan president showed his full willingness to dialogue in Mexico together with Norway, but stressed that there are three conditions for sitting at the dialogue tables. Three conditions to go to Mexico. One, that the United States of America and the European Union lift all sanctions on Venezuela. Two, that all political sectors at the sitting recognize the validity and functioning of the republic powers and the constitutionality of the country and its legitimate authorities. And three, that all sectors renounce violent plans with criminals, coups d'etat, assassinations and other ways of violence. Three first conditions, and I could add a fourth, that all the political sectors who want to join a large, plural, flourishing table of peace. I agree with the table of Mexico and Norway. New details came to light about how the mercenaries involved in the assassination Haitian president were recruited. The Lusur has access to masters via WhatsApp. Let's have a look. Might be echoing in Neil Cáceres Durán's ears six months after listening to them avidly when via WhatsApp he received instructions on how to apply for a contractor according to military forces and grades. Se llame soldado, el color de la carpeta es roja. Su oficial, la carpeta es azul. Si es oficial, pues amarilla. 
Si no tiene nada de eso y fue, fue policía, pues es verde. Neil Cáceres, 45 years old, worked as a gardener in a condominium in Colombia and was confident that he could prove his expertise in one of the proposed profiles without anticipating that he would earn $2,700 a month. He told his friends that he was waiting for an offer from abroad. Que los aspirantes sean mayores de 22, menores de 42, que tengan como mínimo curso de fundamentación en vigilancia, o sea, debe tener ese, el de fundamentación en vigilancia. Si tiene 20 reentrenamientos, pues meta los 20 reentrenamientos, que eso quiere decir que usted tiene experiencia. According to the Haitian police, those involved in the assassination in Haiti confirmed that they worked for a company based in the United States and Colombia. In the audios obtained by Telesur, the recruiters explain even the smallest procedure to be taken into account. de hoja de vida para los que lo necesitan, o sea, para los suboficiales. Para los soldados profesionales, tiempo de servicio y resolución de retiro. Para los soldados regulares, el tiempo de servicio. Carpeta que no llegue completa, no lo van a contratar. These messages could have been sent by former soldier Hersaim Mendivelso Jaimes, arrested this weekend in Haiti after being identified as one of the mercenaries' recruiters. Previously revealed audios point to others as responsible. Today it is known that CTU security based in Miami was the contractor of the 26 Colombian mercenaries involved in the assassination of the president of Haiti. In Ecuador, agricultural laborers have blocked roads on different parts of the country as part of the national strike actions to denounce the failure of the government to abide by agreements made with the sector. President Guillermo Lasso has threatened the strikers with jail. The strike was announced by the national movement, which represents farmers, agricultural and rural workers. They are demanding the fulfillment of the agreement signed during the electoral campaign of President Guillermo Lasso. According to the agreements, minimum prices should be established for the agricultural products and regulations established regarding material costs for the production. In the United States, a fight over the weekend cost, the evacuation of some counties affected and several power grids in the state of California. On Sunday afternoon, a fire was reported in the snowy mountain south of Yosemite National Park that covered more than 15 square kilometers in the state of California. The flames caused by the evacuation approximately two countries and affected some electrical networks. Five fighters work aims the biggest hit wave ever recorded in the region. The European Union has extended its coercive economic sanction against Russia. The bloc is using Moscow alleged non-compliance with the Minsk agreements on Ukraine as its latest justification for the measures. The extension is for six months. To move comes as NATO forces up their precious campaign against Moscow. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov notes that his decision was not unexpected for the government and ignores the willingness to improve relations between Russia and the European Union. More story coming up. Stay with us. Protests and looting continue in South Africa on Monday, leaving so far 10 dead and nearly 1,800 people arrested by the police. 10 police were killed and more than 300 arrested and mounting violence in Riyadh following the imprisonment of former South African President Jacob Zuma. Authorities deployed soldiers to help police quell the violence the National Defense Force said. 
The violence began last week when Suma began his 15-month prison sentence for contempt of court. The former president had challenged a court order to appear to testify in a state Blake investigation into alleged corruption during his presidency between 2009 and 2018. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa bowed in a somber address broadcast to the nation Monday night that the police and army will restore order after routing and he appealed to all South Africans to work together for peace. This violence may indeed have its roots in the pronouncements and activities of individuals with a political purpose and in expressions of frustration and anger. At the beginning of this unrest, there may have been some people who sought to agitate for violence and disorder along ethnic lines. As a commander-in-chief of the South African Defense Force and our security forces, I have today authorized the deployment of the Defense Force personnel in support of the operations of the South African police service. The National Joint Operation and Intelligence Structure known as NetJoints has intensified deployments in all the affected areas. In Iraq, a fire in a hospital in a province in the southeast of the country left at least 50 deaths. The incident occurred in the care unit against COVID-19 of Al Hussein Hospital in the Iraqi city of Nasirihia in early balance Shira had recorded 20 deaths. According to a medical source, 16 patients could have been evacuated from the burning hospital. According to local media, the victims found lost their lives as a result of the bomb produced by the fire. Firefighters keep on the lookout for more people harmed by the fire. Nepal's two courts out the sitting prime minister and restated the dissolved parliament Monday, plunging the Himalayan nation into further political uncertainty. The country has been a political crisis for money in, in fighting between prime minister Sharma Oli and senior leaders on his party. Oli first moved to dismiss parliament in December, but it was reinstated by the Supreme Court, which called his move inconstitutional. Oli first moved to dismiss parliament in December, but it was rein reinstated by the Supreme Court, which called his move unconstitutional. Oli tried again to dissolve parliament in May, but his decision was challenged by lawmakers and political activists in the top court. <laughs> The Global Islands for Vaccines and Immunization won excite agreements with Chinese vaccine producing company Sinovac and Sinopharm from the supply of COVID-19 vaccines for COVAX. According to the deals, Sinovac and Sinopharm will provide 110 million doses for COVID-19 vaccines to COVAX by October, which will help alleviate the current shortage of vaccine supply in developing countries and promote the fairness and accessibility for coronavirus vaccine distribution. Meanwhile, healthcare workers in Greece will be suspended if they refuse to get vaccinated under a new mandatory police announced by the country's prime minister. The immediate vaccination of workers who care for the elderly in nursing homes, which is the most vulnerable category, becomes mandatory. Those who do not vaccinate will be suspended from work beginning on August 16, because it is not possible for people who are supposed to protect those who are most at risk to be the same potential carriers of that risk. From September the 1st, mandatory vaccination will also apply to both public and private health care professionals, 
It is unthinkable, for example, for an unvaccinated nurse to care for an immunosuppressed cancer patient. All remaining lockdown restrictions in England will be lifted in a week despite a sunrise. In coronavirus cases, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson confirmed. Every week that goes by, we're getting hundreds of thousands more jabs into arms and our delay to the roadmap that we announced last month has enabled us to get 7 million more jabs in the last four weeks alone. By next Monday, two-thirds of adults will have received a second dose and every adult will have been offered a first dose. And it is the thing, single most crucial thing now that you get that jab, a jab that can protect you and your family and allow you, for instance, to go on holiday. And it is, of course, only thanks to the vaccine programme that we are able to take these cautious steps now. But to take these steps, we must be cautious and we must be vaccinated. So please, get that jab. Still concerns over the we'll keep our tough in cases policy, has killed pressure on the government to take a more cautious approach over lifting restrictions. New infections will reach 100,000 a day no, later yes, in summer. Many of the infections have occurred in among younger people who have yet to receive Every a first dose of vaccine. Of the government has no plan yet to offer vaccines to children under 18. The roadmap that we announced last month has enabled us to get 7 million more jabs in the last four weeks alone. Curfew in 32 Valencia's municipality after core approval due to the increase of COVID-19 infection rate. The Valencian community is facing an exponential increase of the contagious rate and increase of hospitalization in Spain, and the Supreme Court of Justice has ruled to stop the spread of the virus. It has issued a resolution that will allow the reduction of nighttime mobility in 32 towns with more than 5,000 inhabitants. We have come to the end of this new brief. You can find this and many other stories on our web, uh, website, telesurienglish.net. And join us on social media for Telesur English. I am Denise Herrera. Thanks you for watching.